and five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to everything. I'm Kevin on stage. She's AJ. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers on 2024. Welcome, you all, to the Here's the Thing podcast with Kevin on stage, that chick Angel, and Joshy Gans, a.k.a. Spanish guy, Mick Fly. Uh, oh, we love okay. y'all. Thank you for pulling up. This is four years of podding. Potting. And we're still going. We like to uh, party. <laughs> hey. That's good. That's right. good. Before we begin, church announcements. The Bald Brothers show is streaming this Friday. We have switched it up a little bit. It no longer disappears after 48 hours. Like, keep your distance. Once you pay, that link lives on forever. You can show it to your grandma for her birthday on August 38th, 28th. Oh, I was about to say, mm -hmm. your grandma did, ain't she? Yeah. <laughs> you can watch it on Halloween before your party because it's just me and Tony. We don't have to hide the hide the show Set. stuff because it's it's all fresh and created there. Uh, and for your listening and viewing, viewing pleasure, we had a very special guest this uh, podcast. I mean, uh, this um, show. Ball this Brother show. show. Uh, Josh, roll that beautiful bean footage. What's your funniest I'm never drinking again story? And I threw up during sex. Patrick Cloud said that. Oh, yeah, Pat. So, like, okay, I was at a New Year's party, right? And you know, like, New Year's is like 10, 9, 8, and everybody's looking for somebody to kiss at that time, right? So I, I don't want to say what the girl looked like, but, but I'll just say what she sounded like, and then you could just imagine it, okay? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man, you just, so, you just scooped so, up anybody. So the midnight countdown passed. But she, she came up to me and she was just like, did you get a kiss? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Is that how she really sounded or was that your drunk hearing? Was it like old school? That's <laughs> not what she sounded like. I just want you guys to imagine. <laughs> Ah. And she was like, oh, you didn't. <laughs> She's like, oh, you didn't get a kiss? We should redo that at like 1230. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I guess 1230, she gonna come back. But I didn't think she was, you know? And then 1230 comes here, she comes slinking. Up. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> It's 1230, please. She said, you ready? And I was like, okay. I was standing against the wall. I was a, I was a wallflower. And she picked you up. <laughs> so much worse than that. All right, so. She grabbed you up by the cheeks. Here like, we go, pal. Like, it's a new year, new me. Like, <laughs> so mind you, we were at a house party of somebody we did not know. And okay. I was with my friends. She was with her friends. And she was like, well, <laughs> she's like, maybe we should go somewhere more private, you know? And I was like, all right, I guess we can, I guess we could do that. <laughs> I love how in this story, Patrick talks in his normal voice. <laughs> and she's, why would I be different? <laughs> she, she's just Quasimodo and you're just like, hello, my name's Patrick. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> so, so. <here's, laughs> so here's what you how much of a slut she thought I was. Oh. She took me to the laundry room mm. where there was like a fresh load going. Oh. And she was like, all right, you ready? <laughs> I was like, I guess. And she started making out with me and she had like fishnets on and she just grabbed the crotch and tore them. <laughs> Jesus. Lord, I was mercy. like, a what? She was like, yeah, get in this. I have to finish the story. And we're back. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that. Hit up kevonstage.com slash shows. Get your tickets for the fit in. Uh, if you're on Patreon, if you're other well, other, other well, other. Come on, you got it. Just Get click it. the link in my bio oh my God. And, and enjoy the show. You're going to have a great time. Uh, Angel, what do you have? So you can check out my interview with uh, Lip Service with Angela. Um, she interviewed me a couple of weeks ago about my latest single, I Just Wanna Shake My, as well as One Margarita. You can also check out my recent article with Blavity 
um, that just was released, I think, yesterday. Blavity in, in the, the park. Uh, uh. Something about the 4th of July. And then there'll be another article uh, via XO Nicole coming out in about a week. So check them all out. Your girl be talking and whatnot. Your girl be chopping it up. Yeah. Big chop. Special thank you to our sponsors away. Policy Genius and Prize Fix. We'll tell you more about them later on in the show. All right. The number one request. Actually, before we start. Talk, Talk huh? Cam. Maya from Patreon said Zay Zay starting college. If you don't know. Second day. College boy is Zay Zay's name now. That's how I've heard to him at my home. Wow. Yes. That's acceptance. God bless you. <laughs> you got that is acceptance. <laughs> I tried to. I actually recorded this video, but I saw the addresses across the street from my house oh, in the video. Awesome. So I just hated. didn't post it, even though. You can barely see it. Not, it the, the guy on TikTok, man, he, he can find if if I blink right now, he'll go in my eyes and find my body right now. So yeah, so but I was like, Zay, let me go to college with you. I'll sit in I'll just sit in a different part of class. He said he didn't want me to do that. But uh yesterday, or I'm sorry, Sunday, Sunday. Big Washer came to his campus and took pictures of him. We were embarrassing him because me and Melissa had on C Sun Mom and Dad shirts. As, they, as you should. And also if he thinks if he thinks during hoodie season, I'm not going to be wearing CSUN hoodies. He's sadly mistaken. I have waited for this moment. When he was in high school, we didn't want to put his school out and all, all right. that stuff. Even though his school was a doggone prison. Almost all these schools here. <laughs> right. they, you they can't are. even get in as the parent, much no. less the killer. And the killer be in the school. <laughs> oh, that's the, you done that's locked the victims easy. in there. Correct. But anyway, college boy, there's 30,000 people on that campus. And I was walking. I said, whoo, we huffing it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a walk. It's a big walk, but he went over there. He said, I said, how was your first day? He was like, uh, the parking garage, there, there were so many. It was big. Yeah. I was a little scared. Oh, the baby. It was, scared. It was so funny because you should be a little scared because on that big, you know. Yeah, like when you go, when uh, most people who go away to school, they go a couple days before classes start. Right. Get the acclimated to the campus. freshman move in, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, do your little orientation. Get the lay of the land, like my niece at NCAT. She got to lay in the land. Yeah. She walk into the student union at 10 o'clock and everybody in the family child's like, get in that room. I'm like, let the baby walk yeah, to the she student got to union. Be, that's when you feel the freedom. You yeah, like, like, I'm finna go get me an ice cream cone. I could just be out here. Can't I could be out nothing. here. But I do not want to walk by herself at 10 p.m. You know, she is a girl. Uh, but uh, Zay Zay drove to class. He 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 bought a, a Lipton iced tea. Brought it home. He didn't even tell us. He didn't ask us. <laughs> Just used his debit card. This boy is going to class from one to five. Oh, look at his easy oh, ass life. Wow. Said, man, his you easy done. life. I had class at 8 a.m. I had a class at 8 30. I know I picked it. <laughs> yes, I picked but it. But still, and also, y'all know, you college college graduates, 8 30 in college. It's, it's 4.30 4 a.m. It's 4.30 a.m. You, you don't even sleep the night before. You oh, just no. have to just stay up. Eyes no. burning. Also, yeah. he said he got Fridays off. And he's got Fridays off. I didn't accomplish that until I was a senior. I, 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 see. That's when I was like, oh, yeah. I, what I'm going to do, Tuesday, Thursday classes, that's it. That's All the I rest did. of my days is clear. Oh, he's yeah. doing that currently as a freshman. Fridays. He, he, uh, doesn't, he doesn't have college. This by the is time not college. We, me and Melissa were seniors, we only had to go up to that campus three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Yeah. Friday, I wish I would come up here and walk around <laughs> yeah. on, a, on a Friday. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. But I'm so proud of him, man. He has a little backpack in there. He's just a little black boy walking around. Little Marcus's first day of school was today, and it took everything to get to the school. I said, why y'all going to have road construction on the first day of school during the commute? <laughs> Do it from 10 to 1 and figure it out. But anyways, <laughs> we just went to the Nike outlet, bought him a whole bunch of stuff. Uh huh. When I tell you, the pants is already too short. Oh, that was man. two days ago. The pants is already too you short. You bought those pants two days we ago. We bought him some Nike track suits because he love a good hoodie matching uh, sweatpants mm -hmm. combination. We bought it in a large. He can't fit no extra large because my baby thin. And that's the problem with them tall lankies. Mm. Their waist can't can't go up the middle. That's all right. I'm Remember the in, in the children's place they had the pants that had the oh, yeah the, the, the little band. thing. Yeah, the TCP the, my kids still got them up, not little Marcus, but the other ones. Yeah, they need that for Marcus and Zayze because their little waist boy it don't be catching none of that fabric. It doesn't, and he is too like extra large will make it longer. But then what what where what's gonna hold on to? You gonna have it all scrunched up? Yes, he gonna have all the bunch in the back. <laughs> 
<laughs> looking like he got a bubble butt, which he already does in real life. And this is gonna make it. He gonna be sitting on that. Also, thing. don't fall in love with the size on the first on the first wear either. You put that Nike tracksuit in a in a wash. He got capris. And it's ninety dollars for them to not for them to basically have to take it to dry clean. Who's taking sweatpants to a dry cleaner? Oh, well, I guess we are, but that's all right. Mama likes the man shit. We about to come out with some damn sweat suits for little. That's skinny, also funny tall. for. In, in order to Mama say likes it. man shit. All of it. Skinny. That's a good collab, boys. Angel. It's a good collab. It's a really we good collab. We got to do something with these, for these babies. Unisex. Yes. Shake Shoot. their hands. All right. So the baby's in college. In two years, we might be empty nesters, and I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Oh. What I am ready to talk about, speaking of children, uh-huh. Cam Newton went crazy viral. Shout out Fiercely V on Patreon. She said, Cam Newton, Nick Cannon, all over my socials, being the personifications of pure. Oh, she cussed there. Uh-huh. Uh, What's up, Cam? <laughs> so, pure what? What's the word? Sp- spell it to me. Stuffery. Uh, Shit- shittery? Yes. Uh, it, so if you didn't choice. know, Cam Newton was on his podcast, Funky Fridays, which we just talked about last week. Correct. Kirk Franklin was on there. Yeah. With Dr. Bryant. Bryant. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, this is my first introduction to her. Did, yes, had man. you seen her before? No. I had not. I hadn't either. Uh, great introduction for her. Yeah, she's uh, about to be popping for real, for real. Not such a great clip for Cam. If you haven't heard, open your listening ears to this. A lot of people see my situation and not think that I'm not high function. What situation? Okay, so I'm not married. I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. By how many women? Three. And this is the kicker. Yeah. I want more. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want by your wife. Them. I just want God to bring him. Oh, okay. My desire to get married is lower than my fear of divorce. So, as you would say it, Dr. Bryan, you said it, I didn't say it, I will agree. I'm just taking my time. He just said that like he got her. Mm-hmm. You're not taking your time. I am, though. You're being very action-based. You're not taking your time. I'm taking my time. You're being very action-based. You have eight kids yeah. with three different women. Yes. You are creating, procreating, and multiplying. That is not taking your time. You're being very selectively active. Mm. Okay? So you're creating, mm-hmm. and disclaimer, the kids are innocent. They are beautiful and amazing. Anything I say has nothing to do with them babies. But you are proactively choosing where you want to be active at and where you want to take your time. Mm-hmm. You want to take your time in having a wife because of your own fears. But you will, and I say this with all respect and love, what I'm about to say next, okay, Cam? But you will selfishly create broken families, Mm. even if you're in their life and you're a proactive father, and I believe you're an amazing daddy. I can only imagine with just your presence and and knowing you. But these families are still broken. Every child cannot have Papa in the house with them. So some child, if not all, all, will end up with some kind of deficit without daddy being there. Mm -hmm. Now, you chose to do that. I'm not saying you sat there and woke up one morning and said, I want to be selfish today, so I'm going to go make a baby. Not saying that at all. But those are selfish acts at the expense of your fear. And yeah, that is a low-functioning behavior. To say that I'm going to build these houses and put kids and these beautiful women and kids in them, but I ain't going to create a home in them. I'm going to wait till I dissipate my fear to find a wife where I'm still going to be fearful with because there's no such thing as not having some type of nerve or some type of feeling behind marrying somebody. And then I'm going to build a home with her while all these other beautiful babies have houses. That's completely unfair and that's selfish. And so, yes, you're taking your time in this department, but you're not taking your time in this department, which means you're compartmentalizing. And compartmentalizing never works. Compartmentalizing hurts everybody involved. Everybody who's in this box and that box and this box and that box and this box. And then here you go over here trying to figure out what box you're going to feed or entertain or do. Then you're looking outside to figure out who's your next victim to put in the box. <laughs> it's unhealthy. A lot of people see my... Angel? I mean... As mother of half of eight children... What what are your current thoughts? You, I'm not sure if in your high school, if you had the young black ladies whose hair was kind of short, but they still tried their best to get their hair into a ponytail <laughs> and they would get the pre-con gel and like pull all of their sides. I mean, the sides wouldn't make it till the end of the day, but they would gather it all. That is how she gathered this man. In that seat, like them get black that girls onion. that were like, I will get this ponytail. <laughs> we'll go make it <laughs> if my With the strength of my ancestors, I will pull these edges into a ponytail. <laughs> that is how she gathered him. And she did it in such a um, respectful way. That read was green eggs and ham type of reading. 
I'm telling you what, because it's honest to God, like tr there's so much truth. And this is not to say that a nuclear family is the only way for a child to be raised in a loving home yeah. and in a, a thriving home. So I don't think that's her sentiment. And I also don't think that's, that's even um, his intention, meaning I don't want to create a nuclear family so that I don't have my children don't have a loving home. But I don't think he is acknowledging the repercussions that his actions could have on his children. Yep. I think about the fact that I have a lot of kids. I got them four kids. You got four at the house. I four books. Four. You I ain't live, never getting set. I live at the house. Okay, I work from home mainly. All right. My husband is at the house and even still, I don't feel as though I can give them all of the things that they could potentially need to not feel lacking in some areas. So I can only imagine if they were spread out to different houses, mm. trying to give them all of the things that I personally think are necessary for a child to truly grow up whole and healthy. I think my children will, but I, it, like I'm saying, it's a struggle with me in the house. I, that was my first thought as a father. I, I experienced parent guilt and I done lived in their home from the birth, the day they were born. And I, I want them to move back in after college. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like, man, I, I, I still miss soccer games and tournaments can only pick up one, whatever mm -hmm. I me, Kevin, me, Kevin, mm -hmm. I, I know I, I not, I mean, I don't think I know I couldn't properly father eight children spread across three homes. Mm -mm. Money is an aspect of parenthood. Yeah. It's a very important aspect of parenthood. So no one thinks these kids are going without food, water, or shelter. Mm -hmm. However, one could argue time spent yeah. is right up there yes. with money. Mm -hmm. Your children um, learn how to see the world by your actions, yeah. not your words. Mm -hmm. Correct. They, they learn by what they see you do. I learned how to be a husband and a father by the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, by my stepfather, who, who was my father, how he led the home, how he loved, how he provided, how he did things, all that stuff, good, bad, and indifferent. Mm -hmm. um, again, money's great. No one's arguing that these kids is hungry, mm -hmm. right? But you can't be there for them mm -hmm. you can't not for all of them not for all of them right you you can be there sometimes you can be there for the parties and the stuff and that's all well and good but tuesday at 4 17 some of your kids don't see you i don't know who he lives with where the kids are i don't know none of that mm -hmm. uh and the, the the thought the funny thing about cam who am i like he was a great quarterback he's a good podcaster there's something funny about somebody thinking they got you when you got them. When he sat back and was like, well, I'm just taking my time. And she was like, actually, you're being very active in creating book at home. He was like, oh, no. Because he was projecting <laughs> his fear that outweighed marriage, which was divorce. Yes. They said, I'm not sure if this is the case. They said, the Patreon said they all live with him. All the kids? That's what they say. So do all the mamas live? And I'm sorry to cut off your thought. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if all the mamas live. All the Somebody said That's, he doesn't live with at least seven of them, though. So I don't know. That I, I, Allegedly. It's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would actually be true. He might share custody with all of them, which would make sense. Somebody said it's he's a not. Now we're seeing the children live with him, not the mother's. Somebody said it's a community. Yeah, he must have. Okay, so what probably what probably is the case is that he has joint custody, so they the kids probably live with him part of the time. Okay. Um, but I can I can't imagine that the wife the not the wife excuse me the girlfriends and the kids are living with them, and that these girlfriends are not also actively participating in raising these children. Got it. So they're saying that on that podcast, he said that they all live with him. Then it's got to be part of the time. I can't imagine they're all living there full time. Could be. If they 
if they live there full time, he has more time on his hands and he can be a better father than he thought, than I, than I thought. It was my assumption that they did. Usually you kids live with the moms. Uh, I'm thinking it's got to be what I mean. So I know people who have the 50 50 split custody. Mm -hmm. And so that means that part of the time they live with the father, part of the time they live still, with the mother. It's still an unbalanced of split time within Correct both parents. Correct. mundo. <laughs> Hit banger. That's what it made me think of. Um, regardless, 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 I do think to purposefully make a bunch of babies mm -hmm. by a bunch of people just for the simple thought of I don't want to deal with the thought of possibly getting a divorce. I don't even think marriage, I'm not saying marriage is the answer. Yeah. I just try to figure out why he making them by so many people. He said, yeah, no, this, this article says he had five with his ex fiance. Okay. I know Jasmine Brown just, just had, had the her one. first. Mm -hmm. So we go with two more. So whoever is in between them. Cause he made it by three people. Three mothers. Yeah. I, well, you know what? Let me, let me, hold on. Let me pedal back then some. Cause he did not say on the podcast, he said he wanted more, but he didn't necessarily say he wanted more with additional women. Mm. No, he didn't. I still agree with what the doctor said, meaning you are being selective at where you want to put your energy. Yeah. And I think, to her, also to her point, if the kids, unless they all live in the house, mm -hmm. the moms and the kids and Cam. Yeah. On some like Cody and uh, them whites. Can't think of any of their names. Oh, the. Christine. The, oh, John and born K plus women eight. from Man. Arizona. Nope. Born white women from Arizona, sister wives, Mary, yes. Robin, Janelle, Christine. Christine. Even they, listen, them children was broken home. All of them kids yeah. was broken homes. And they lived in the same house at one point, mm -hmm. been the same city, and then they were spread up, apart. But yeah. them kids is going into the therapist's office, yeah, uh, for lack uh, of a better term. Term. Um, I, 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 I say get them eight good. <laughs> see if you see how they turn out. People. Get them eight. Good. Get them eight good and see how they turn out. Uh, they said he adopted two of them, or two ain't he is. Yeah, you know. Listen, he's he being adopted fruitful. His ex's kids? He's being fruitful. He is multiplying. I just don't know. Well, he said God's if, bringing them. Yeah, he said however God brings them. them. However, you <laughs> so he could mean he wants to adopt some more. He said he won't mow. He said, however, God brings them. So somebody can drop some kids off at his house. Not using contraceptive, yeah. of course. That's how usually the kids come. Well, no, I'm saying adoption. If like somebody could drop some children off. Like, here's a baby here. And he might be like, I'll take this baby because yeah. I just want more kids. Yeah. I do think there is a more responsible way to do it. And I do think that there are going to be some, some repercussions listen kids have been in way worse situations than what cam is putting these mm -hmm. kids in and so that's the reason why um but however i still agree with the doctor's sentiment of it feels a little selfish it feels a lot of selfish because he's not trying to provide the best situation for a child and i do think the best situation for a child is to have a mother or two parents at least that are working together for the same cause, whether or not they're in the same house. Yeah. And I feel like the more m extra parents you add that have other input, it can get a little bit dicey. <laughs> it can get a little dicey. I'm not saying it can't work out. I'm just saying if you're, I would always hope that someone's intention is how can I make this the best situation possible? And I don't think that's his intention. I think his intention is how many more kids can I, I want add kids, to man. That's what I I'm want a whole say. lot of them. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say that he got to be married, but I do feel like there is a way to do it where the kids ain't got to 
possibly be the ones that end up getting the brunt of the situation or the or the mothers but you know they yeah. got to make their own decisions as well and if y'all didn't realize i make my own decisions and you do uh, mm -hmm. like i went to vegas honey traveled this weekend to vegas and had a good good time being bad had being, a great time. being bad oh. yes i did had a good time and you know what have made it even a better time what, okay Angel? is a way all right i see a way a lot when i travel i see this is a if you didn't know it's a fantastic luggage brand and as much as i love its look i prefer soft suitcases and always wish that away made one well guess what now they do uh this suitcase seriously looks better than any old school soft side suitcases i've seen and it's designed to be lighter than others on the market soft side comes in four of the best selling sizes in tried and true colors there is something for everyone in the lineup Two carry-on sizes, two check sizes, four colors, black, blue, pink, gray, made from high-stretch nylon. This bag is tear-resistant as well as weather-resistant. Uh, you can spill a little coffee on the gray one, and let me tell you, it will still hold up. The bag is soft and not sensitive. Super durable, flexible, and expandable. Bonus points for the compression pad system that helps you pack it all in and the anti-tipping mechanism that holds the bag steady while expanding. Both of which are proprietary to a way. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, soft side suitcases, I have a lot of hard suitcases. Soft side suitcases, though, I feel like allow you to pack more in. You can, like, keep stuff, especially when you travel for, like, longer days or you want to have a bunch of different looks. So having this option with the way is muy bueno. You got to check out the new soft side luggage from Away. Head over to awaytravel.com and use code SK, SK. to save 15% on any Away suitcase. That's awaytravel.com, code SK, SK. SK. to save 15% on any Away suitcase. Offer ends on December 31st, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard. Plenty of time. Yeah. 15%, that's good. Right? That's a good, that's a good, I better <laughs> go in and jump on that. Um, but yeah, now having a little bit more information, I don't judge Cam as harshly because I definitely thought that the kids were uh, not in his household. I don't know if they live there 100 percent of the time, 50 percent of the time. Regardless, though, I do think a lot of kids, if both of their parents are healthy and sane, don't want to have to split their time. For sure. For sure. Speaking of Dr. Bryant, let's hear her talk to Nick. Alice Cannon about a similar situation. But you're speaking from Even your experience, the highest, which makes it better. Because your experience of these women is that they fall short for a jet and a good meal and a good man who says he goes and to church. Strong hands. A high for, and, 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 and let me go further, and probably a big penis. But okay, you said it, not so me. let me go. But, a high, but again, a high functioning, I'm not even talking about value, a high functioning woman who's yeah, done the work. Explain this. Who's explain done it. the work. I'm trying to hear what this that, high functioning woman not, is. But a high functioning woman, you cannot send a jet. And be toxic, and she will go on the. She don't know I'm toxic yet. A high functioning woman wouldn't even attract you, baby, because it's law of attraction. Stick with me, just stick with me. Please explain Nick, this. Nick, high regulate your emotions I'm and listening. stick with me. I'm regulate with you. your emotions I'm and stick with me. I'm trying to hear you. Listen, what is, what is law of attraction? We attract it's who, who we, we are, are, despite who we think we are. Absolutely. Think we are. Absolutely. Okay. So a high functioning woman uh -huh. is not going to attract by just by default. By her calibration, she's not attracting a man this who is, is, listen, not who is not perfect. The man has got all kinds of mess. So does she. So does she. But when it comes to the level of her calibration and functioning and mental health and doing the work, she's going to attract that at which she is, that at what she leads with. So let me say this. Do I get on private jets that I pay for myself? Absolutely. Have I had a, a man shit, do a, a wonderful, beautiful shit. things for me? Absolutely. <laughs> Have I had rocks and this and caught off weddings? Of course. But let me say this. Prior to me doing the work and being a high-functioning woman, I attracted low-functioning men. Hold so on. you said you're because a high-functioning woman finish. who attracted low-functioning men? No, no, that's not what men. I said. I said prior to me doing the work and becoming a high-functioning woman, my low-functioning self attracted low-functioning men. Hold on. That, you know why I attracted them? Because I needed low-functioning to feed low-functioning. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. A low-functioning man cannot feed a high-functioning woman, and a low-functioning woman can't feed a high-functioning man. And so what I'm telling you is there is no equally yoke there. 
if a high functioning woman is uh uh a gallon. Okay. Okay. And a low functioning human being. Let's just go human being. I even man. Now she got props. We got props. <laughs> this is the high functioning person. This is the high okay? functioning woman right here. Just a person. Let's just. Her. This is not the clip I wanted to play. Okay. Oh, that's the clip I watched. No, hold on. There's another one that was more. Uh, Why are you looking for it? Somebody asked, what's the difference between having kids with one woman versus multiple women? I will say this. I think if it's a healthy household and it's a daddy and a mama and they together, being able to see love reflected through your parents to each other has more of an impact than people actually acknowledge. <clears throat> Subconscious. Yes. And if there is any type of toxicity between any of, and I'm not saying that's what Cam has, any type of toxicity between Cam and any of his previous baby mothers, that is also has an effect <laughs> regardless of whether or not you want it to. So I think there is something beautiful at seeing a, uh, a mother and a father or parents, however the situation is, both working at the common goal of their children being happy and safe. And it has a long-term effect on the child that it's hard to pull off when you got multiple uh, kids by multiple people. It's just not, it's not the, to me. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Let's try this one, Angel. I'm comfortable with my abandonment. Because you are in your dysfunctional norm that you've become comfortable but with. But it's work. It's become a superpower. But you've learned to survive in it. You're not yeah. thriving in that. There's not a thri that's not thriving. You're surviving in that. Okay. And so anytime you are surviving and not thriving, there is no cape. There is no superpower. There's no superpower in a I lack of mental that. health. And there's no superpower. But it's worked for me. Like you said, I mean, you, 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 know why you read you? me well. You know like, why it worked I, for you? Why? You know why it worked for you? I'm going to go there, and it's probably going to be, okay. Go ahead. This you know, and this is with this all. Is the we want to say the this. first. We got two minutes left Listen, in our first session. With all due respect, <laughs> seriously, to all the women that you've encountered, ladies, I'm saying this. The reason why it's worked for you is because you have chosen and to prey on low-functioning women who don't have the emotional intelligence. No, I'm going there. Who will allow you to do that, Nick? And when I say allow, it's not a control thing. When I say allow, I'm not saying that she sits across you and says, this is what you won't do. You're crossing a boundary. Nick. I disagree. Yes. Uh, oh, this no. is why I disagree. I mean, one, because I... Because with... why are you going to make sure? We no. just got to go in protection mode, too. No, but no, but even what I'm saying, real. because you could say from the... from. The high, all the high value women that wait, I've ever Wait, but I didn't say high value. But okay, I'm just I'm giving compliments. But I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, wait, wait a for the people who are even, even you know of them being because first of all, low we are, functioning women will allow you to function low with them. Nick, you could not function but, uh, that low. So this is Nick, everyone's low function, functioning at baby, some point in their life. You could not function low with a woman of my functioning, not See, because I'm superior, me. not because I'm superior, <laughs> listen to them, he said this really quick, not because I'm superior to any other woman, but because I do have leverage, I've been in my field for 17 years, so we get that, but I've done the work, meaning you won't have an opportunity to I get just, hostile with me, and you may want to flee, but fleeing would not get you I a payoff know, with see, me. Wait a I'm minute. not the hostile individual. This is what you, that's my point. Did you hear what you, what you just said? We said yeah. the same thing. You would never have the opportunity to get hostile with me. Yeah, because I control myself. Hold on. Okay. I have full control of my... I, I, but, I, but in your sense, because that's what I'm saying, because even the only reason I say what I disagree, because at some point we've all been low-functioning. Yes. And we have to accept that. Yes. So, so to 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 Absolutely. label that is like, all right, well, every at some point everybody's gonna be in their in their in their low state. Everybody's gonna Absolutely. be vulnerable. Everybody's gonna feel empty. But everybody's therapy, gonna yearn something. And, and, health, and, and when and it comes tools. to relationships, the beauty of a great relationship is where I'm weak, you are strong. So therefore, I have dealt with some people that balance me and are equally yoked. And at times, have I been manipulative and prey on certain yeah, things? Yeah, That's because yeah, yeah. I'm a man. Right. And mm, but not all men do that. We don't want to. We don't want to blanket I'm a all man, men. And all I will men take do it not prey will... and manipulate. Not all men. First of all, all humans prey and manipulate. Mm, but in a man, not in a, in a praying way. Not see, in a praying if way. If I see that, I can say, okay. I feel like I need this and this person has this. I'm going to do and say whatever I need to do to get that. But, but Nick, again, law of attraction. We yeah. attract who we are despite of who we think okay. we are. You That's used the word. You said women who are equally yoked to you. Yeah. 
Equally yoked comes in many different facets. 100% balance, if they, anything. They have been equally yoked to your low-functioning dysfunction that you have learned to survive no, in. because I use my yes. tools to... Because, to, first of all, let's, let's... You're acting as if I'm entering every scenario with the full me, and, and we all... Every time someone meets someone, you're right. meeting their representative. I know how to turn on the perfect man. Yeah, depending and on so, the therefore, person, I may have manipulated a situation, right. and therefore... So, it's to... No discredit to anyone yeah, yeah, else. I got you. I've come into every situation. I can be God fearing, celibate, the one right, that right, you want. I can right. tell you everything that you want in a man right. and show you that. I can right. open the doors, lay down the cloak, send the jet, mm -hmm. do it all mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, this, no, but, I've but, never. And then toxic Nick but, shows but, no, up look at and you're you like, did, this but, motherfucker got me. No, but you, you gave me the draws and I ain't heard from him in three said, weeks. What you said is perfect. No, what you said is perfect because you named all of the low functioning, superficial things that a low functioning woman would fall into. Church, women, that baby, ain't low functioning. Baby, any woman, <laughs> we going any to see woman, the Lord together. any woman or man, or the mosque, any person who has, any person who's done the work, who gained a sense of self, who's worked on their pain pockets, who's worked on their trauma, are still going to be vulnerable. On, who, they're going to be vulnerable. They're they still going to yearn. They're gonna, and later night when you're imperfect. sleeping alone, you go, no. I wish I had a strong man They're going to be back. imperfect, but that person would want a strong, <laughs> healthy, functioning man, not a low-functioning man. Sometimes it's just a, a nigga with some good hands. Not a low-functioning <laughs> man, no. That's, that's what I'm saying but is the difference. But every this, woman, you can't, but Doc, you can't sit here and say that. But you're speaking from your experience, highest, which makes it better. Lo, I'm saying. Because your experience of these women is that they fall short for a jet and a good meal and a good man who says he goes and to church. And some strong hands. A high fu <laughs> and, 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 and let me go <laughs> further, and probably that? a big penis. But, but, okay, so let we, said, we heard all of Okay, then she goes in. Uh, to this, what do you mean by strong hands? I I was wondering that too. I was like, what are, what am I missing? Have you noticed? And I want to hear your thoughts. She slides them compliments in to him and Cam, and they're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're probably a big penis. I you they said it. Said it. You, it. Said it. <laughs> you said it. You're probably a great father. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. It's a it's a great way to it's a compliment uh, sandwich. Neutralize them. Yeah. They just heard that thing also. Uh, yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts. That's the clip I thought I put in there, but uh -huh. you know, sometimes you go to copy, you paste the wrong yeah, one. Yeah, I was waiting for the manipulator part, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, we'll just insinuate. Yeah, no, no. I don't My know should have been like, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, oh, go ahead. I want to hear your thoughts. It, I, the, one of the things that I love that she said has nothing actually to do with who he is as a person in this situation. But she said, regulate your emotions and listen. Oh, regulate man. your emotions and listen. Oh, he didn't do it, though. He couldn't. <laughs> it's so funny. I had a conversation, a two-hour conversation with my biological father yesterday. And when I tell you, Joy. I wish I would have had that term. Mm. He, he would have been like, I, my, my emotions <laughs> is fine. Uh, but it is... <laughs> It is crazy to hear and watch. Like, it's clear to us, the viewer, I think, to most viewers, that he is trying his best to uh, play off his frustration in it, this kind of jovial, um, juvenile way and throwing out things that are like, he's like, oh, you got props now. <laughs> Knowing her words are actually like pissing him off <laughs> and he can't just be honest about that and vulnerable with, I don't agree and I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> just being like, I don't like what you're saying about me. I don't agree. It, it's actually hurting my feelings, which is causing me to be pissed off at you. But instead, he's just like, yeah, somebody said he was he it was getting him more and more and more and more agitated. I don't know the women that Nick Cannon. Well, I do know one. I don't know majority of the women that Nick Cannon has made these babies with. However, I do believe that even if she used a different term, the sentiment would be the same. These women were not actually tricked into believing that he was going to be there. I think by the third time you see there's a pattern yeah, and you decide if you want to add yourself to the pattern or not, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is a characteristic of a woman. I don't know what word I would use. She used low functioning for a woman who is willing, willing to put herself in yes. to that pattern. I'll give, I'll, I'll give grace obviously to Mariah. She was the first. Yeah. She married that man. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping 
thinking that it was gonna last. They got Morocco in that other baby. Yes. I'll give grace to the second one of thinking, okay, it didn't work out with her, but maybe me and you can have something. Mm-hmm. Maybe even the third one. Maybe the third? Maybe. Possible, on, two of the possible? Yeah, depending on how soon that sec- that she had a baby by him. Mm-hmm. All the rest, though, you have set a standard for yourself that you said, this is enough for me. Yeah. And so characterize it however you want to. I'm not going to put them as low functioning, but they they in a group together. That's a wild. That, that's a wild phrase to low vibrational <laughs> food. It reminds me of that food. I would never eat that food on their plate. That's low vibration. <laughs> that's low vibration. My food on their plate is the same exact food. Crazy. I just don't have it as much. But we got it from the same thing. And this is your event, by the way. <laughs> yes, low functioning. Um, but I yeah. don't like those terms either. But I do like you attract what you are, not what I, you think yes. you are. Yes. It's just the low functioning is, you know, I don't know what people mean by that. I was trying to look it up and. Oh, it's made up by the niggas. Yeah, I was going to say, then medical terms came up. I was like, no, that's, that's a nigga that's, made that's up. Not, no, yeah. low, low functional, low vibrational, high vibrational, high func. That's it's all nigga terms. To, yeah, they don't need to Big nigga oh, Big nigga terms. <laughs> big nigga terms. That's that nigga DSM. Oh, yeah. Five. Low vibrational. <laughs> what vibrations are we talking about? Nah. How many, now, how many uh, mothers of his children does he have? He got her. He got. I know he got. One, I know he got one on selling sunset. <laughs> he do. He got a gaggle. He do now. And he got to be five plus, I believe. How many baby mom? It's a running joke and wilding out. Nick Cannon have. He has six, 12 kids by six. Yo. Wow. Yowza. And I know all them kids don't live with him. That which I do know. No, they live with their mamas. Definitely. Yeah, got to. Here's what I want to say that I thought was interesting. Nick was saying the worst things about himself and positioning it as a positive. <laughs> I was like, do you maybe the when you say the word, they supposed to come around and hear and then brain adjust. Mm-hmm. Cause he was like, I'm manipulative. If you need a church boy, I'm a church boy. If you need a jet, I'll fly the jet. Whatever I need to get, whatever I need out of you, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to be toxic. I was like, now, you said th- that may be true. Mm-hmm. And if that were true about me, I don't think I would say it in defense of myself. <laughs> I think I'd be like, I, you know, like, we all have a representative, and I, I don't think people mean that. Mm-hmm. I think they mean if we meet somebody in a bar, we put our best foot forward, and then as you get closer to them, you reveal who you are. Not... I say, okay, I'm going to date you, and you were HBCU, so I'm going to tell you I went to an HBCU, and you like anime, so I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, that manipulation was the I word. I think that's where low functioning definitely is a very accurate description. I'm going to send the jet. Ooh, I've never been flying on, on, a, on, <laughs> on a jet. jet. And the reason why I feel like that, it is accurate to him, is because he is believing that this is the level in which he should operate in. Yes. Well, he or said, it's work because well, he he's said, work. He said they don't know I'm toxic yet. That is manipulative. Yeah. And he's like, Andy, but he's, what I mean by, he said, I'm a man. As if that excuses the behavior. As if he should not rise above that behavior. Because of his fly gender. Above. Yes. I fly above all the haters. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I, Actually, shout out to Candy. I was looking at this thing that showed all the songs that she wrote, and I said, "Now go on, Candy. You got a pen. Go on, Candy. You be writing all the words, and I and I'm here for it." She wrote them down. All of and them. And that person sang it. And they said, "I don't want no scrubs, Nick." Uh, but he's not a scrub because he got a pass. He did, he ain't hanging out the passenger side. He's yeah. in a unless private place. Scrub is a guy chauffeur. who thinks he's fly, but he's also known as a buster. buster. <laughs> but for him to believe that because he's a man, that this is the level in which he must operate in is insane to me. One, at this point in time, you should already know people. You don't even have to be manipulative. People know when they enter a situation with you what they are going to get. Some are signing up. To be They're baby okay mama number with seven. That. So it's just like, why be a wolf in sheep's clothing? You can be a wolf in wolf's clothing. And they'll be like, pregnant me. Yes. I I uh uh-huh, uh-huh. I know what's happening. <laughs> right. I agree. I am a wolf too. I just need to have some cubs <laughs> yeah. by you. So the fact that he feels as though that that is the necessary behavior to have in order to get what he wants out of someone, to me, that is low functioning because that is not actually the truth. Mm. You don't have to be manipulated manipulative to get what you want out of someone. You can be actually honest yes. about your intention, about your desires, and then see if that person consents 
to that outright. 1,000%. And people, we've, we talked about this when we talked about gold diggers, um, and I think it applies. Often women of a certain age, ilk, and desire know exactly what they're signing up for. Yeah. And they know what they're going for. You don't have to pretend to be anything to any of them. Yeah. They'll be like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I got the BBL, you got the money, give me the baby, the child support me, put me mm -hmm. up in a condo in Miami, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, and I think uh I just I just thought it was interesting that he said the things about himself, you know, that I thought I would not probably say, even this if it were is, true. I'm telling you, he I would is lie. aware. That's what makes it, that's what makes it so sad. There are men who are fully ignorant of their actions and stupidity. Like they can't, you could shine the sun on their actions and they still wouldn't be able to see it. You're just like, it's, I, I have spotlighted it for you. And they're like, I can't. Where? He's huh? I don't see this at all. Nick can see his actions for what they are, but yet he's still agreeing to do yeah. them. And it's just like, at some point in time, you would hope at, when you grow, and like she keeps saying, doing the work, that you would want to hold yourself to a higher standard of behavior because yeah. that's a part of growth. I could I could be trash, but my desire to not be trash overrides the easiness of being yes. trash. And he's like, nope, no, no my, desire to my. be better. <laughs> I'm going to be trash. Um, so, Again, I'm not going to describe those women as low functioning. However, there is there is definitely an adjective. Don't know what it is that describes all of them. And, uh, and this is another reason why I'm not going to fully describe it as that. I don't know what these women saw growing up that made them feel like this was a more desirable situation than any other. Yeah. So some people might have grew, grown up with a two-parent, a very toxic two-parent household yep. that... It, where they struggled financially, where the one parent was absent, even though they were there. Yep. And for them, they might be like, actually this, because the thought of having a functional two parent household seems so unrealistic. Yeah. This is the best chance I can give my child to having, you know, me be there. Cause I ain't got to work. Cause Bingo. dad is paying for everything. Our home is stable because yes. again, dad has paid for everything and you will at least get to see him. I'm now, not going to be broke and, and weak and you're not going to be hungry. So that's one reason why I won't consider them low functioning. I just think they might have a, uh, a skewed p perspective of the world as we all do, but have not seen how other things could be beneficial for them. <laughs> I'm going to go as lightly as I can yeah, over these Yeah, you know, because I could be like, but I, I don't know how I would have had to have grown up in order for that to be attractive. Money is attractive to me. Absolutely. Sure. As someone who has worked very hard, still working hard, sometimes, oh, yeah. If uh, Listen, <laughs> oh, if yeah. Mar I would give Marcus permission, get us a sugar mama. <laughs> get some shriveled up woman, make her day, and have her take care of all of us. I could understand how that could be attractive. However, comma, there's so many other things that I want that that would not be enough for me to just be like, F everything else. This mm. is enough. Yeah. Um, but also when it comes to money and being taken care of, I am so glad that I found policy genius because Shoot. my babies will be taken care of regardless. You understand? And so will my husband. If something happens to me, unfortunate and, um, Listen, God decides it's time for me to go, right? So I decided to plan ahead with Policy Genius because planning ahead is crucial in life, especially when it comes to what happens when you're gone. Getting life insurance may sound daunting, but Policy Genius makes the process a breeze. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. I use Policy Genius um, thank you, Josh. I use Policy Genius to get my life insurance policy because it 
I'm telling you, getting life insurance can be daunting, but not with Policy Genius. They made it so easy to the point that I use Policy Genius, my husband used Policy Genius, and my mom, because I recommend this even when we ain't filming the podcast. That's how good it is. Policy Genius technology lets you compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few quick clicks to find your lowest price. And if you ever need help or guidance, they have an expert licensed support team to answer your questions, handle paperwork and advocate for you throughout the process. Um, now let me tell you a couple of things of why you should trust it. It's the country's leading online insurance marketplace. Since they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, their advice is unbiased. Join thousands of happy policy genius customers who have left five star reviews. And let me tell you how I made sure they were right. I went outside of them and looked at one more company. The, their price was so terrible. I said, policy genius, you were telling me the truth. I don't know why I didn't trust you. <laughs> so I'm telling y'all, so, and y'all can trust me because I ain't over here lying to y'all. You ain't, Angel, and you never would. Okay. And I'm telling you, if anything happens to me, my kids and my husband are set. You you understand they're gonna be all right without having to be with nick cannon so it's never too late to plan ahead head to policygenius.com or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save that's policygenius.com you better sing nigga. <laughs> uh moving on to moving. lighter notes friend of the pod keith anderson lee don't know keith middle name just through anderson <laughs> has Turn DC on its head. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see the video? There's another. I've been watching the videos, but I didn't know he turned on head. I know he went to the Ethiopian restaurant and First he of was all, eating. Ethiopian food goes crazy. I, I've been I, to I a place in try little, again. little Ethiopia. I did too. I had a great time. Let's I listen to this because this has it's a, a timeline going so crazy. Like, I know we only posted about three spots from Washington. But we went to about 12, and we made a decision as a family and as a team, and also a personal decision to not post most of them. So out of those 12, I probably only got like one or two more that I'm going to post. And the reason for that, a lot of those videos, in my opinion, aren't constructive at all. And before the narrative start, I'm going to show a few clips of the places that we did go to. And again, I don't think... DMV, not just D.C. Correct. He was in the DMV he area. He was in the DMV. Which you does not correct. include Baltimore. Correct. Where they eat pickled onions whole. They're delicious. They're constructive. So for privacy at a restaurant that we went to, I'm not going to say what restaurant it is. I'm going to just show you a little bit of our personal experience. It's the whiten with the sweet potatoes and mac and cheese. Unfortunately, I won't be trying any of it. As always, I ain't trying to be rude. I'm just be honest. The smell of this, insane. This perforated the whole car immediately. So much so that my family went back in and asked if they fried it in the same grease that they did the shellfish. And come to find out, they do. And it smelled like it. It smells like shellfish. It smells like frozen fish. It smells like fish. The funny thing about this is my grandma used to fry everything in that green. <laughs> the same green. Everything grease. tastes like chicken, fish, and fries. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. You can have cat fish. It tastes like chicken wings. Yeah. That grease used to be black. Mm. Before we would switch it out. Nowadays, God is blessed. We used to grease one or two times. Matter, matter of fact, one time, I ain't going to hold y'all. Or a fried daddy. We drained every time. Growing up in El Paso, that doggone pot was in that top right corner. Yeah, until with the something grease in it. It would take longer and longer to, to warm up every time. <laughs> Got to burn through all that crackle on the bottom. <laughs> the crackle. <laughs> bottom oh, row. Yeah. Everything tastes the same. It smells almost unedible, in my opinion. I don't want to smoke. Mm -mm. The entire customer service experience, in my opinion and in my family's opinion, was completely unprofessional. It said on the IG that they opened at 1 o'clock. The truck didn't open up until 2.15. It took Ooh. about 45 minutes. When they went back to go eat the food, they saw her preparing it. No gloves, no washing hands, grabbing money, grabbing strawberries, grabbing oh. fruity pebbles, and putting it on top of our food. Fruity pebbles? I don't even know what that is. Hell, I'm this, man. <laughs> well, what's that go with? There's no reason that should be. The reason there's no food in my hand is because a lot of the restaurants we've been recommended since we've been here look like this. Y'all got to go to his TikTok to see the pictures. It ain't that much. And I'm not the target audience just based on the pictures. So it goes on like that. The majority of my timeline on Twitter is talking about this. One thing Keith said later in the video, he was like, Y'all get mad at me for not going to the right places. I go to the places where people recommend. That's right. I spend 10, 12 hours in this van every day driving all up and down. I spend hours doing that. It's not my fault right. if I'm going where y'all recommend. Then I've seen a lot of critiques like, well, you he should go to like this one person that had a lot of clicks. Japanese places, Salvadorian places, Ethiopian places. 
them things ain't getting recommended like that. Right. When I people don't... recommend, they gonna recommend the places they like, they go to. Mm-hmm. And the, the now, nah, I'm not saying they're not getting recommended at all. I'm saying they're not gonna be the names you hear. If I was coming to LA for the first time, I said, "Hey, what's LA?" You know what they're gonna say? You need to go to Roscoe's. You need to go to Mr. Chow's. Whatever the most famous place is. Uh-huh. Uh, it's going to be the one that's recommended. Now, when you live in LA, you're going to be like, man, you don't go to Roscoe's ain't really chicken like that. Right. We just go. It's like Chicago and Giordano's. Yeah. Like no matter what you do, that's what's going to be recommended. Diabolical. Now, if you, huh? Gio's was a diabolical experience. <laughs> we went to Giordano's and Portillo's in the last trip. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. But people in Chicago be like, our homegirl Sharice is like, you need to go to Italian Fiesta or whatever. But my point is, uh-huh. if you ask the masses, the masses are going to reproduce those answers. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody said, pack your own food when you come to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> now, the funny thing about this is I realize in D.C. I've only had great experiences with food, but I go to the same curry out place every time. I usually stay in the same part like of the city. You about to say curry. Yeah, it is. Curry out. That's how they pronounce it. <laughs> it's a like curry out. I found this place maybe three DC trips ago. I promise you, I stay in the same place. I always stay kind of near the White House, near where the theaters be. Uh, say what up to Joe. Say what up to Joe. Uh, <laughs> shout out for, for giving homegirls loan. I walk about 20 miles. As a matter of fact, when we was in DC the last time I went there, mm-hmm. got me some chicken wings, some fried rice, some mumbo sauce. They don't have no chairs in the restaurant. I went out, bulletproof glass. <laughs> Right, there you go. I got my food. I went outside. I sat on a bench. Yeah. I smashed that food right then and there. Mm-hmm. Tossed it in the trash and walked back to my hotel. Can't tell you the name of that spot. I just know where it is <laughs> and how to get there. Uh, and then I usually, we usually go to restaurants after shows, you know, but Keith doesn't go inside. He he gets uh, carry out. Yes. Um, so anyway. I didn't know. A lot of people in the DMV was like, yo, I ain't going to hold you. I lived here the last 10, 12 years, lived here all my life. Outside of brunch, a lot of common thing I started seeing, which mm. was not my experience, uh, outside of brunch and curry out, D.C. I don't really have no food like that. And I was like, D.C. one of my favorite food cities. We having totally different experiences. Uh-huh. Um, but I also don't. He tends to go to a small mom right. and pop. To be able to help them with the Keith Lee effect, which I think is admirable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I look when he asks for recommendations, I look, people are recommending a a lot of the same places over and over Yes. in those other places that he ends up visiting because he is allowing his followers with the people who have either lived or currently live in those places to recommend where he goes. Yes. So he's trusting that they aren't sending him to a place that he would disdain. Mm -hmm. But then when he does. What at least he didn't trash the places. One thousand percent. Real quick thing, when I ask for anime recommendations, I get the same names all the time. Yeah, and it's usually the same type of show. It's yeah. like a. It's called Shonen. It's usually like a tenth or eleventh grader mm-hmm. with powers fighting and killing and stuff. Yeah. When you ask the masses, they gonna recommend One Piece, Bleach, you know, mm-hmm. Demon Slayer, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen all the time. If you yeah. want to go somewhere else, you're gonna be. Angel, what do you like? Yeah. You're going to have to find a small person and they're going to have to say it. But Keith is a man of the people. That's what the people be saying. Same. And then the people get mad when the people that get recommended don't be good. And he also said he don't drink. And a lot if you don't drink, I, I be drinking. Mm-hmm. So the they food tastes good to me. <laughs> My tongue is not everything mean, delicious. Listen, at most places, they bring you the drink before they bring the food. Yeah. Everything tastes a good tummy. <laughs> everything tastes a good tummy. Yeah. So, um, but I think it's so frustrating. It's got to be so frustrating for him mm-hmm. to listen to the people and then y'all get mad at him when the people are recommending it to him. It's like no matter what he does, yeah. outside of say everything is good, He's in trouble. Now, if you were a restaurant at DC and he did show yours, that's like doubly good. Yeah. Because if 12 got, were off and yours even made it. Yeah. Can you, you know how bad it got to be for Keith to be like, it's just n- nothing good will we come up. We went to this. all these and y'all getting three. That's, <laughs> that's all you get. Somebody said in the comments, uh, in the Patreon chat that he's got to uh, change his approach. And I think they might be right. Like, I know he's a man of the people. 
But I also know his intention is to bless these restaurants yes. and not waste his family's time. He don't want to be having stuff that's about to give him put him in anaphylactic shock because they didn't cook the damn fish in a different oil. That that is a waste of his time and everybody else's. So I'm not sure what the approach would have to be. Like I don't know if it has to be a food expert in that city that is the one that's like giving him a list of listen mm -hmm. because somebody was like, if he did his research, there's only so much research he can do. Restaurants don't put the worst pictures of their food up. That the picture, somebody on Twitter found the pictures that was on the restaurant's website. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like they cut, you know how like at Costco or you're like Ralph's or whatever, your local grocery store, they um, have like the shrimp cocktail in mm -hmm. the freezer, uh, I mean the refrigerator. Yeah. And like they got that and just threw that on some macaroni. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I realized though about Keith that's different th than me, and I didn't even realize it till him. And I hope, I don't hope. I like that I can still go to restaurants and eat. So much of it is about the full experience. Mm -hmm. uh, carry out, and now his carry out is right outside. So yeah. your food should still, still ordering my food effect. and putting in a plate should be there. But a lot of restaurants, it is part of the whole experience. Yeah. But for the restaurants he's going to and the market he's going to, your carryout got to be, it got to be on point. I th it makes me think about what's good and how we had to lie many huh? a time. Yes. When? Many a time. Angel, when? I wouldn't say lie. I would lie. say, I would say we lie. highlighted what was good. We definitely tried, but it wasn't, we weren't telling full truths on we, something. I, there was a waffle what? I had that might as well have been sinking sand. You understand me? I was like, what is this texture in my mouth? So I had to talk about something else besides the texture, even though that's what was screaming at me. What? <laughs> screaming at me loud. Like you like your waffles when they gr when they tear up the roof of your mouth, don't you? You like it when it just dissolves into just freaking glass. I never lied, but when it was the uh, dish was nasty, I would say, but this chicken is chicken <laughs> But I, there was some times where I was like, yeah, I appreciate y'all. Hey, man. God. <laughs> there was a restaurant where we was just like, whoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the show called What's Good. Now, <laughs> Nothing not here. Got to, be able to, got to be able to say at least one thing is Nothing good. Nothing here. <laughs> um, so with Keith Lee, he is uh, like. He ain't going to do it. He want, he's not going to do it. He's not going to air it. We didn't already spent the money. So we got to air it because we need the content. Oh, yeah. But our desire not to tear down a black business is higher than our desire to give you a fully transparent. You're right. We never lied. We just didn't we, always tell we, full truth. We did, now, we did I, not lie. I can be honest. We did not lie. But there was more than one occasion. Yeah, where we had to like really decide very distinctively what we wanted to highlight in order to tell the truth and not be not tear down. No, no. A and restaurant. I, listen, because these restaurants were opening up their restaurant to us and listen, you know, I know Food Network, they come in probably on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday during your lightest times. We was going to these places on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we were appreciative. Yeah. And good. our goal was to highlight. We should be like, what's good? Highlights. Yeah. Because we don't want, and then this people, this their life's work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, there was one place that I don't want to say. What's wrong with it, Kev? But they, boy, they had made a dessert. I said, I don't want you to make nothing sweet. <laughs> I don't want you. I, 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 was I, was I don't think you were at this one. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you were. I don't know. I didn't want to get you. <laughs> you wasn't tell me which one it was. But I, boy, I ate that thing that it, that they sold. And I said, don't mm -hmm. you put that in nobody's hands. <laughs> no, don't you. Don't you put. This is I not... want you to go back to your email and you go, go into your, <laughs> go into your, your Wix or your Squarespace and you delete that. Take it off. <laughs> Take that off. That Take menu. it off the menu because it's not what we want no more. Yeah. So with Keith trying to make sure that his opinion is always respected. Yep. Um, because there are people who love, love to give you the negative and thrive yes. off of that, actually. Thrive off the negative opinion or thrive off the assumption of the negative. Um, Keith does not want to do that, and I can understand. I don't think... In my per somebody said they still like they think his approach works fine. Yeah. I don't know if it works fine if you've spent all this time and you can't highlight 
only three es- restaurants. No. I, I, sure. To me, that sounds like something is broken in the system. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel for him because I know his heart is pure. He really wants to be able to bless restaurants that make good food. That yeah. just could use the type of marketing um, that Keith is able to provide. But if if he's only getting recommendations from restaurants where they're cooking in, with their bare hands, <laughs> touching money, rubbing their and they, noses and He has and video ass. of that. Yes. That's wild. Yes. That person said, that's, that's not opinion. That is. No! Yeah, that's, that's insane. That is. that is Touching the money. That is disgusting. Money be in people's butt. It, 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 oh, wow. Titty sweat. No, it does be underneath my titties. Yeah, with strippers, you, you, t- you could tap into a butt. I went to a strip club. Oh, tell us also, more about that after the break. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sure sports is. app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy fo- sports. Unlike other apps, on Prize Picks, it's just like it's just you against the numbers. All you have to do is pick more or less than on two to six players, stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on daily action with your friends and become a part of Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 wow. Sign up today and $1, get $50 instantly when you play Five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the five fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right. One only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on Prize Picks because it's gone when September ends. Think Tyreek Hill. Will get, oh, excuse me. You think Tyreek Hill will get more than 90.5 yards in week I, one? I sure do on, on the on the receiving yards. Oh, what about Aaron Jones run for more than 66.5 yards? Aaron Jones can do it. I, I believe in him. I think he's got it in him. Well, listen, cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. Preseason football is underway, and you can make you can also make more or less on 2024 season stats. On Prize Picks. Mm-hmm. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Tell me about some of your personal experience, Josh, with Prize Picks. Oh, I am just so glad that the NFL is back this weekend for the first week, I believe. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely going with the Caleb Williams because it's like you said, Angel, that's one of the um that's one of the specials that they're promoting. You get he only needs to throw one one passing yard and you can get that dub. And that's all September. Sign me up. Sign, sign you up. Sign me up. And you should sign up by and download the Prize Picks app today and use code SK. SK. And get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code SK. SK. On Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks. Run your game. So Angel, I'm curious. Speaking of football season. Of these seven, who would you say is your top three quarterbacks to have a breakout season for the rookies? Got Spencer Rattler, Michael Penix Jr., J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or Caleb Williams? I mean, Angel, you already touched – I mean, she already touched on the number one. There there it is. Caleb is already going to do it. Bo, feel like it's going to be great for him too. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they're just going to have a good time. Uh, yeah, good time this season. 2024 for Bo. Caleb, yeah, he's just, he's going to tear it up. He's going to throw it. They're going to catch it. He's not going to get sacked because no. his uh, offensive linemen are just really going to be like, hey, hey, can't get through. I actually do think he's going to have a great season. I was watching him on uh, Hard Knocks. The Bears are the team mm-hmm. uh, for Hard Knocks. He looks good. He actually got an O-line, too. He's got an O-line. They, they done paid a... Uh, Ah, oh, that receiver. They gave him big money. I can't think of his name at the moment. They got Keenan Allen over there. They're going to be all right. I was uh, an offensive lineman when I played powder puff football in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, not Justin Jefferson. He plays for the DJ Moore. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, DJ Moore. He just got paid. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Let's talk about this thing. 
which is uh, Judge Mathis getting divorced <sighs> after 40 American years. I guess he rested his case. Hey, get it, Josh. Hey, get it, Josh. Hey. Do you just mm -hmm. pop into your head? I think so, man. It might be my ADHD, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> I love it. You better run after it. I love it. Oh, uh, what do you think, Angel? 39 years, after 40 years of marriage, how old would you even be? Me? Yeah. By the time I get to 40, 67. I mean, come on. I ain't going nowhere. Starting over then? Or you just want a break? He would have to... Oh, cold cock me and like just straight up punch me dead in my face for me to be like i'm out i'm not going nowhere man there's just 40 years i would be 61 it's over baby <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting back out I here. I want to ride off into the. What you want me to do? I'm not about to go chase down Nick Cannon after this happens. No. It's to be like, put me on a private jet. I'm, I'm by myself now. Oops. Give me your strong. Are your hands still strong? <laughs> I don't take even, my, I don't even my, know what that take means my no more. Hands. I'd be like, Cam, hands. I can't make no more kids, but you can adopt the four <laughs> that uh, I already had. Man, I can't imagine. Now, I heard he just retired from, uh, from judging the judge show, or they retired him. I don't know which way it went. But a lot of times after long marriages, people retire. They'd be like, I don't like you anymore. Like, Will you be yeah, at the house? still here? <laughs> yeah, and it could be either way. She could be like, now nah, we had a good thing going when you went to work 10 hours of the day most of the time. Yeah. Now you all I up in the house all the time. I got to spend time with you? Yuck. Yeah, 40 years. That's You know, when I see those type, those long marriages, I'd be wondering how many years ago they needed the divorce. Right. Oh, wow. Because I'm like, it can't have just appeared at 39. You're 38. They're like, man, it ain't going good. Yeah, it <laughs> feel like that had to have been 20 years ago. They've been like, just if we could just hold on for two more seconds. <laughs> I, I can't imagine at 39, something happened then. And the, one of them was like, hell no. Can't do it. I'm gone. Get them out of here. Mm -mm, no. I can't imagine, Angel. That just, ah. Uh, 17 years in, I'm already like, I have been too deep. I Listen, I know your mom. <laughs> Melissa's mom is staying with us right now. I came down with my shirt off. Is hey. Mary here? Yes. Hey, Mary. Tell I said, hey. Me Tell Melissa was, uh, I mean, hey. me and Mary was taking Melissa's braids down last night. Her braids were looking good. And that's 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 marriage. Yeah. Have you ever greased her scalp? Listen, Miss Margaret was in the delivery room when I was pregnant, uh, getting ready to have a Mars. She saw me butthole naked. Oh my God. What? Booty butthole. To the wind? That's, to the that's recent, wind. too. Rooted to yeah. the tuna? Yeah. yeah. All of my, everything her, her son see, she saw. She saw your chocha? Chocha. I was just, <laughs> oh, she's like, you're doing good, Angel. You're doing good. Big old, big Fat titties swinging, <laughs> areolas just the size of dinner plates. Why were you butt naked in the, don't you, don't they have a gown? Well, I got in the shower to help reduce some of the pain for my contractions. Uh -huh. And I'm not about to be in the shower in a gown. Oh, That's she true. was in there like going in there. Yeah. she. All right. You're doing good. You're doing good. I think at some point when y'all are like together for a long time, the who is my birth child, they just, you know, it's them is just my yeah, children. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think they don't, they, Angel ain't Marcus's wife. That's, that's my, that's my baby Angel. Yes. She's, she's in contraction. We got to do what we got to do. Uh, 100%. Like, I know Melissa's mom and dad and my parents as well. If anything were to happen and we like, we got to move in, then we moving in. Mm -hmm. Hey man, things went terribly. <laughs> <laughs> the whole business went tits up. <laughs> the whole thing is bad. Let me move into your basement. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, nah, listen, Melissa, uh, I don't think my I, my mom, she wouldn't have, she didn't, I don't, we weren't that close. <laughs> what, me, what are you saying? Just, I don't think we were ever close that she would have seen Melissa rooted to the tutor. Oh, yeah, no. Well, first of all, if I'm your daughter-in-law and you're my mother-in-law, you're going to end up seeing me naked at some point in time. You're going to end up seeing my titties. Why? Want a breastfeed. Oh, okay. That's okay. Different. Okay. Two, yeah. if you want to come see your child, your grandchild being born, I'm not about to be have decorum when I'm in pain. You Why see are it. people's in laws usually in the birthing room? Um, they can sometimes. They Was can she in be. there for baby, baby Marcus? She's never been in town any other time I've been in labor. 
Got it. So this was the first time. And we were like, come on in. Come on in. Ah! <laughs> so she saw my mucus plug. When it fell in the toilet, I what said it. What is that? It. Oh, the little stopper of the, to- the tub? The- the little of my of my 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 vagina to the baby, yeah, it fell out in the plug. toilet. Yeah, it's called a mucus plug, and it's the start of the kind of the start of early labor. Is a water break behind that? Um, and my water didn't break until sometime the next day. Like mm-hmm. it took some time. But I the, thought water break is the beginning. No, mucus plug is a little Muc- glob. MP MP go. It's like a glob of snot. Mm. It, it looks disgusting. It fell out in the toilet. Oh. And I said, what is, th- is that? Wait, did you go water? to the bathroom and then it was in there with the pee? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, mama, talking to Miss Margaret, come, is this? Where was Dorothy May? She wasn't at that. She was at her house. Miss uh, Margaret was visiting us. Got it. I said, I think. And she said, she said, okay, we're going to rub your feet. Yes, I have kids, Latoya. Melissa had C-sections. I didn't yeah, see that, no it mucus makes plug. The, yeah, it makes the, the, the situation, the experience Yeah, different. Melissa had C-sections. I, don't, I ain't no doggone uh, doula. <laughs> I'm just a nigga who was there. Yep, I ain't seen no Dr. Mucus Bryant, plug. man. We had C sections. Lissa didn't even have no water break. Yeah, so no, if I'm your daughter in law, there's a good chance you're going to see more of me than what you expected. <laughs> you just, and, and you're going to love me. You know why? Because I love you. This is our show love. This is this is what's going to happen. Because let me tell you, if my mother in law get old to the point that we have to take care of her, I'm going to wash her ass. I'm not going to be like, Marcus, that's your mo- your mother's butt. I'm going to be like, I'm uh, just like if my mama got sick and I had to, I'm going to wash your ass. Nurses do it. They do. And I love you more than a damn nurse. I love you too. And now, I'm going to hand over that. What is it hourly for the traveling nurse? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in here. I can get it because you are of a different gender than your mother-in-law yeah i just hey man i, I can't thank you my me my mother-in-law got the same same types and parts that i do and she ain't got nothing i ain't seen before no, but parents love saying that you ain't got nothing i ain't seen she before ain't. get over here she <laughs> get ain't. Naked. those she good ain't. living homes be like five grand a month though they do, they Kevin on sense. stage, meet and greets in <laughs> Tupelo, Mississippi. No show attached. Why is it always Tupelo, man? man, I got to go to Tupelo <laughs> where, the, where the people where the, be in Tupelo. Listen, where they would never see you at, you're going to see me now. <laughs> meet and greets this Wednesday at Bojangles parking lot. <laughs> picture Kev with a box of chicken. First person buy him a box, get a picture. The rest of y'all, $10 a person. Yo, bring, okay. a, bring a Bowberry one for free pictures for the whole family. Bury it. Get those days at the carry out on I ninety five. Come on, and, and, I'm gonna do my shows at Bucky's. No, you gonna you what you gonna do is you gonna be washing your daddy. You gonna be like, come on. I ain't rolling them balls up. <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you will. Stop touching and it. And it's gonna be great in your set. So I was washing my dad's balls. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? See, his Robin Armstrong always lives in Tupelo. She said she drives Tuscaloosa. Tupelo. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, baby. Right Damn. up to the tide. Roll that good tide, baby. Roll We're going to be at Bryant tide. Denny Stadium doing meet and greets <laughs> with uh, <laughs> the coach who used to be at <laughs> Utah. As much as you hate meet and greets, you washing balls. <laughs> I'll do a meet and greet every day. I'll be at your child's school. <laughs> We're going to be at Lotus Flower Middle School. <laughs> Like, Savannah, I Georgia, me I, green in the pickup line. I'm going to put your baby in the, it, in the car. Would, would you want your kids, if your kids didn't make as much money as Kev on stage and y'all hit hard times and you could not take care of yourself, would you you not be like, Zay, please help me? Or you, you'd be like, just I, let me sit in my I place. already told them, I'm going in your house. <laughs> exactly. And you better clean, and I better not be soiled. Exactly. I grew up in a house with mom, grandma, great-grandma. By the grace of God, my grandma was always able to wipe her own butt. Uh, but if it came to it, that's just what it was going to be. You know, we, and in El Paso, uh, Hispanic families, they be multi-generational than a mug. Absolutely. So we were not living alone. Brother, yeah. America is going to be like that. Yes. They, the, the, the amount of inflation, the cost of real estate, the amount of foreign investors who are buying up all the real estate, the amount of corporate, there's no way Zillow should be buying homes. No. And right. also putting out, um, I always forget this term. When you say, come look at my house and tell me how much it's worth. 
starts with an A. It is a, a, a appraisal. 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 And a, per, a company should not be in the appraisal business. That Correct. owns the company that advertises the... Dog, yeah. you saw they were buying whole neighborhoods mm -hmm. to, to jack up the price. Yeah. An average person can't compete with that. And the wildest thing about it, the mortgage to rent ratio isn't that much different in a lot of places no. in America, but the qualifications to get a house is so much different. Correct. So most people can actually afford to buy a home in it's America. It's cheaper to have a mortgage. Yeah. In most places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My house right now, if I didn't own it, I would pay at least a third more Oh yeah, in rent, if not double. And somebody, ah, yeah. and somebody's eating off that. Yes, and that's what's happening. People are buying up all the places, mm -hmm. and you raise the rent. This is this is from here to Dothan, Alabama. See the shining sea. See the shining sea. Uh, but no, my my my, I'm I'm prepared for my family to have to move in, and the traveling nurse to come in to wipe. To wipe the traveling nurse to wipe you. Yeah, Just get yeah. the house next to you, man. Well, you know what? If you have the money, by all means, have a professional to do it. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, if I got to... I'll call you over, Angel, since no, you're I'm... so comfortable with other butts. Oh, what, my mom's different than your mom and your and your mother-in-law? Okay, I'll come over there and watch them. I'm going to tell you everything. Let me tell you about what's going on I'm out. between the labia majora and minor. We need to get it checked out. Kevin, you would be like, get out. <laughs> it's just like, here's a picture. Let's don't move know what on. I... <laughs> your friend of the pod, Angel... Fried chicken was in some hot water. I don't know exactly what she did. Did she like a Trump post, a twenty Project Twenty Twenty Five post? This is Patrick Mahomes' wife, Brittany Mahomes. Uh, she did something that people were like, uh, uh, "You is Big Mag," which I don't know why that was surprising. Uh, people be. Married to black people and be full on racist. Not yeah. saying she is, but people, that's just who she's attracted to. Uh, and I believe Patrick Mahomes is mixed. So she saw the white in him. Oh, absolutely. And then well, she no, was attracted the, to the that. The racist love to procreate. Oh, yeah. She said, I could cook the here. The blacks, they, 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 they love it. Uh, let me see what, what he said. His. Um, she says, uh, 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 did he say it? it? She said, oh, this is what she said. I mean, honestly, to be a hater as an adult, you have to have some deep rooted issues. You refuse to heal from childhood. This is what she wrote in her Instagram story on Friday. She said, there's no reason your brain is fully developed and you hate to see other people doing well. Is that what you think is happening? Is that was that what she thinks is happening? I'm, I'm confused. So the post that she liked was the... Uh, 2024 GOP platform, the Make America Great Again. Okay. And uh, it was giving out all the things that I guess, uh, writing down all the things that he felt like his platform was based on to make America great again. And, um, and then she says, I don't get how people with, she liked that post. She says, I don't get how people with kids would still vote for a known child rapist and felon. Who's she oh. talking about? I get, oh, no, no, somebody else. To, oh, no, no, sorry. This is what someone said about her. My apologies. I read it wrong. <laughs> it says, I don't get how people with kids would still vote for a known child rapist and felon. Guess people like Brittany Mahomes prefers the tax breaks over child safety. Jeez, Louie. Oh, got it. Yeah. Got it. They're saying that about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're saying she basically outed herself as a Trump supporter. I don't. Is she a white girl from Texas? Is I don't know where she's from. I know Patrick Mahomes went to Texas Tech. Uh, White I'm, House, Texas. I'm just, mm. she, White House, Texas? White House, Texas? <laughs> that ain't even a big city. I don't even, I've never even heard of population 7,660 in yes. 2010. Where yeah. is White House, Texas? It ain't Black Apartment, Texas. She owns a sports team. Uh, White House, Texas is outside of Tyler, Texas. When your town, biggest town is a, another small town. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is from Tyler, Texas. The biggest town next to White House is Dallas, which probably, judging by the map, at least an hour and a half, two hours from, from Dallas. Come on, man. 
That lady ain't. She ain't gonna. They've been together blue. from time. Like they've been together for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Y'all they, remember her saying fried? No, she no. Him. But I think they went to the same high school. I could be wrong though. Because uh, where's he from? They probably did. That seems where like from. where they would have met. Is high school. He. I know he. Oh, he's from Tyler, Texas, which is right is near White House. Yeah, they, they probably oh, either Find met in the house. Yeah. Um. So it says she unliked the tweet. She tweeted. If she liked the oh, tweet on August thirteenth and unliked, unliked it, it as of I August twenty fourth. It. it took her nine days to, to to unlike it, and uh, she does not follow Donald Trump. But well, she you can't she, make it that obvious. Yes, yeah, she's from White House as well, Josh. Uh, but what's crazy is. They said she did a tweet back in 2017. The fact that people will be going back to read people's oh, they'll tweets. Oh, be on everything. Thank Andrew. God I don't tweet. Um, she said, Trump, you have offended way too many people. So I'm not sure. Let me tell you, this is what my two-hour conversation was with my biological. Let's hear it. Oh, my Trump support. Yo, daddy. Big GOP. Big GOP. Are you with me? You know what? What is not his reasoning is not. He doesn't think that Trump's a great person. He just thinks he'll be able to afford eggs and food. Inflation. This. Inflation. I said, do you not? He's like, I ain't no dummy. I said, I didn't call you dumb, but I'm not sure if you know how government works. They said, not MLK. (laughs) (laughs) Now, if MLK, I'd put him (laughs) back in the grave. I put him back in the grave. Uh, this man, I said, you take in propaganda is what I'm saying. I'm hearing you repeat oh, propaganda that you're not realizing is propaganda. No, I'd be watching all the things. I said, no, you don't. I mean, he's also sexist. So I told him that as well. I said, also, a lot of what you're saying is, is based on sex is sexism. <laughs> the way you just dusted that in there, but also. <laughs> yeah. I made sure that was at the end of the two, the two hour conversation. I said, also, it's because you're sexist as well that you are feeling this way. So he said, all I know is that when he was a president, I could afford oh uh, eggs. I said, but we also, because him being president, were hit by a pandemic way harder than what we should oh have my been. God. I said, so if we have to live through another one, you better hope that you live through it. I said, because <laughs> you not affording eggs ain't what's going to kill you. It's going to be whatever disease come in a wreck, run through you. I said, so be grateful for the 85 years because, baby, you ain't going to last much longer if we got to do this one more time. He's like, I'm just telling you what I didn't live through. I said, oh, I, you man. know what? I, I know. And I lived through a lot of But no, I'm talking about back in the day. Them days is gone, sir. We're talking about present and future. He said, these countries don't respect us. I said, who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? <laughs> they don't. Uh, China, they doing whatever. Russia, they doing whatever. <laughs> is that whatever. how he says the country's name? China, Russia. <laughs> Turkmenistan. He's like, they ain't not going to respect. They not going to respect her. See, they respect Trump because he's crazy because he said crazy things. I said, you is that's what you really think? I said, is that I said, you're not making much of sense. You're not. The, 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 the grandma is the baby. The grandma is the That's baby. That's what starts happening, man. Somewhere around our age, we we turn the parent into parents. I was nobody really, warns you, Angel. No, they don't. He's like, I just, you know, because uh, not Baltimore. Excuse me, Maryland is an important state in this election. Yeah. So I said, let me tell you, because he was like, I get to vote how I want to vote, and so do you. I said, I I know that. I said, we both have our our own uh, ability to vote how, and I wanted to be like, and I hope your car breaks down on the day. <laughs> I said, but I'll have this conversation with anybody that I love that I feel like is uh, doing themselves a disservice. Yeah. He was just like, but I'll be able to afford eggs. I said, no, you won't. Well, the is, is, that the, is, is that his one issue? That is truly. That's my one my one thing. That is truly what he kept. He said that and that countries do not respect us anymore. I said, are we at war? Are we at war? So what are you talking about? Respect. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> right. These are the things, y'all. Uh, y'all focus on the wrong stuff. Yeah. I got to have my egg. Eggs are up. I ain't gonna hold you. Eggs yeah. are up crazy. I said, do you know why eggs is up? It's all the damn tax breaks we got when Donald was in office. Nah, man, because he gave me twelve hundred on the stimmy. He was like, no, he was everybody had tax breaks. I said, and guess what? We are now having to repay all that shit that we did not pay for. Everything costs more. 
And he was like, ah, I'm just saying, if he could do what he did before, get the eggs down. I said, you act like he brought down the price of eggs. He walked into the dad. supermarket and said, you know what, guys? The price of eggs are too damn high. I want to see your dad at a rally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Questions, y'all. Eggs. <laughs> What's your policy on the price of eggs? And he was they like, six thirty four at Audi right now. Who getting the eggs down? Kamala <laughs> Trump. Whoever gets the eggs the lowest, hear my vote. You'll take it. I, I, I really. He was like, "This is why I don't talk politics with people." I said, "Well, you gonna talk them with me today?" <laughs> what did you talk to him that day? Was that for that? He reason? called. He called me, and my mother had told me that he was. <laughs> my mother. This all my mother had said. Um, your father had said something about. He can't vote for no woman to be president. So I thought that's what we were going to talk about. His sexism. Not the eggs. So when he when he went down that path, I said, oh, you foolish Negro. I said, okay. And Marcus was like, I can't believe you have. I said, it's good. And I wasn't. He was getting. He. I wanted to be a, like, regulate your emotions. Because I'd be like. He was like, okay, I'm just going to let you talk. Since you want to do all the talking. I said, I'm going to get my point out. Yes, because I've listened to you. So now you'll Dang. listen to me. You can listen to me. And I was like, you're cutting me off. I haven't even made the point. I said, this is why. He's like, I'm just going to vote. Well, what's my best interest? I said, and see, this is why black. <laughs> and the eggs are at the top of the list. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> issue i said and this is why black women he said see you're black women i said you i didn't finish what i'm saying i said my whatever you're gonna know. say about him i'm with you yes i said this is why black women have always had to vote not just for our best interest for but for the best interest of the country i said but you can afford to be selfish i cannot because i care about my children other people's children i care about people who don't look like you care about Ooh. eggs though did, no. And respect of country. How many eggs she's got to feed the kids? <laughs> respectful eggs. Somebody paid y'all said, what about respectful eggs? You be a vegan then, damn it, is what I want to be like. Get Eat a something chicken. Else. Eat something else. <laughs> Get a chicken. But yeah, he was oh, definitely, man. oh my God. It, it was a two hour. He said, this is the longest. You never talk to me. I said, this conversation was important to me. I said, it was very, he was like, all right. Yep, okay. see you later. Yeah. <laughs> It was, golf, huh? it was a great conversation. I was like, okay, uh, the, he's a lost one. We'll we'll Listen, see. There's a lot of votes that go into the collage. Yes, I said we'll work on somebody else if I have to. Man, yeah. that was funny. Make eggs affordable again. Man. Me, <laughs> Mia instead of Mega. Mega. <laughs> I said, oh bless his heart. Oh man, uh, you know what's so interesting? Um, and then we can let this go or we can move on and go back to our homes. It must be a blessing to be able to vote off of stuff that you like the stuff that is going to hit our communities. Even if it's not going to hit us, we, we feel a, a pull mm -hmm. to vote for the best of our community. A lot of people in America can vote only on what is important to them, mm -hmm. like tax breaks. Rich people don't have to worry about those laws that yeah. are going to affect them. They just, a lot of people can have the benefit of being single issue voters. Yeah. Uh, black people in America don't have that benefit because mm -hmm. it's rare that any candidate's going to give you everything you need, mm -hmm. period. You just hope to get the most or somebody that's not going to kill you or give the police immunity when you die. Correct. Or, um, but some people are like, they're not, I'm not racist. I just, the tax break, mm -hmm. big government. And that's all. Oh. They care about it. Like we said time and time again, growing up, I realized my pastors for probably my whole life up until Trump probably voted Republican down the ticket. Mm -hmm. If you was going to be against gay rights and abortion, mm -hmm. you could be pro killing black folks. <laughs> but the babies will be alive okay. before you kill them. But if you is against <laughs> gay rights and abortion, that's all I need to hear. Yeah, That's why it's going to be interesting. If you ever get a GOP president who like a legit candidate who is pro-choice, and you have two pro-choice candidates, the pastors that I grew up with early in life, they're going to be like, oh what my, do I oh do? What do? I don't know how to I fix don't, it. I, I got to look at something else. Yeah. If they were to be pro-gay uh, rights and pro-choice, both on the ticket, I don't know what other the thing. The country though. has gone to hell is what oh, they're they, going to say. I, they, might not, they might get to the point where they'll be like, Jill Stein, <laughs> what is you on no, gayness and like, abortion? Don't vote. And no, no longer need to vote. Just get your life right requires because <laughs> he's coming back. He's coming. <laughs> they're, they're, this is what's got to be happening. Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what got to United be. United States of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Listen, there ain't no way. I, I just, vote for Jesus, Gene said. Yeah, I'm going to do a write-in for Jesus Christ. He ain't on the ballot. They was a write him in. <laughs> write him in. Write him in. You know, it is definitely, I, I, at one point in time in our life, I do definitely feel like the parties weren't so divided. Like, they definitely had different issues and different things that they um, believed in, but there wasn't this huge gap between the two. Now there is a mm -hmm. definite gap that uh, one side I don't feel like cares very much at all no. about uh, black people, people of color, about poor people. And I feel like uh, another side is has those people in mind while it does also have its own demons. But I don't understand how people can latch on to one thing and it you got people who are latching on to uh they want abortion to stay um a state's right so that these uh conservative states can make these women suffer and and they're like this is what i this is what's important to me the right for abortion should stay in the state's hands which mm -hmm. is just idiotic to me and then you have people who will throw it all away for the genocide in gaza they're mm -hmm. like if this doesn't get fixed I am not voting at all. Yeah. And I'm like, there are so many other issues in the middle that I cannot ignore. That's I am so part of sorry. The problem. That's there was there's been some conflict with between black people and pro Palestine people on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, when Kamala took over, uh, and I, I've I follow a lot of Palestinian uh, creators, and well. I, I do follow a lot of them mm -hmm. prior to you yeah, know same, this. Same, you know, same, same. I'm, I'm a comedians, but when the war started happening, they a lot of them shifted their content mm -hmm. towards you know Palestine, and some of their frustration was with black people. Like you vote for comedy, you're voting for our oppression, and a lot of black creators were like, "We are being oppressed <laughs> here." Too. right now well, why y'all join the military because y'all you know black people are overrepresented in the military this one black girl broke it down so good she said do you understand that that the military was one of the few jobs that black people could actually get where racism wouldn't hold them down as much as other jobs uh, -huh. uh it's not because it's not by choice there yeah. wasn't a lot of other viable options for black people we we can't we can't just you know literally literally you literally. could not well, one of my, somebody I follow on Twitter posted that their granddad got a letter from the college they applied for. This is like 40s or something like that. Uh, and was like, maybe it was a little earlier. I remember the year, but he was like, we can't admit you based on your Negro race. Like, what is wrong with you? So that person went into the military. Right. Right. My dad in the military because one, ain't a lot of good jobs. Two, which I didn't know this until much later in life. The military comes to them little poor schools and says, where are you finna go to college? You ain't got no money for that. Right. Come to the military, we're going to get you. 100%. They're up and down, junior colleges. Yes. Yeah. And high school. Yeah. Every school I went to in my life, yeah. even non-military base ones, them army recruiters was in the... The, the cafeteria at my cafeteria. school. Cafeteria. Yeah. They had a, day, a table there every day. And people, will, and you turn 18, you can sign up. You People like, I got a job. I have somewhere to live. These are yeah. the most basic Correct. things. This is why I was interested in going to the military. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a job. They would have kicked you out. Uh, they didn't. They kicked me out of ROTC, which is <laughs> right. pre-military. Yeah, they were and like, the lightest version. They's like, get your behind. <laughs> we don't out want, of here. You no, know, we don't want you defending our country. Just get know. out. You got no. flat feet, poor eyesight. <laughs> you can't tell one. And I was in the Air Force. Oh God. ROTC. A big heavy ass plant officiated <laughs> foot. No seeing ass nigga. What we gonna do That's with what you in there? A white man wrote all that when they were kicking me out. They wanted my uniform back. I didn't even get that back. They was like, it's going to be 500. I don't know where the hat is. You got to make you a damn right turn. Your shoulder go out. And you just going straight. In the uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, ah, going down. Black Hawk uh, down. Get, <laughs> <laughs> getting kicked out of Air Force ROTC in college is crazy. It uh -huh. couldn't have been more simple. I wasn't built for that. But I grew up in a world where that was a very viable option. A lot of home loans are because of the GI Bill. My yeah. dad... House he lives in today uh, in Fayetteville, purchased because of the GI Bill. Wow. Amen. Tammy's house, GI Bill. That's all we had. Yeah. And a lot of them black men went from the military, retired military, then went and reworked for the government. Correct. Another 20 at the post office, a lot of them post office, whatever the job is, they done gave Uncle Sam 40 years. Mm -hmm. It ain't by choice. Right. 
for people like me to be like, all right, Zay Zay, boy, I wish you would go down to the army. Are you crazy? Yeah. They gonna send your black behind to Afghanistan the first thing smoke it. You gonna be in supply, transportation, <laughs> infantry. I gave they all want my them kids. black and brown people dying early. early. Get on the front lines. Get your butt out here and sweep these mines. That's why all my kids inherited my flat feet and my knock knees. Hey man, that's something my daddy gave me. Thank you. Now help him with the eggs. I'm about to send Just tell him your dad, I'm going to send you eggs I every am. Monday I'm so you can vote. I'm going to send him Costco eggs. I'm going to give you so many eggs. You don't, <laughs> have, you don't <laughs> have to worry about. We're going to chip in. We're going to get 24 eggs. Instacart you every week. You're going to be so sick of eggs. You go. <laughs> right. And you better shut the hell up. <laughs> you understand? Shut the hell up about this. That's the lobbyist for your daddy. Ooh, I got it for your vote. Give me 12 eggs <laughs> yeah. every four days. Doesn't it? I'm going to talk to Kamala and be like, you're losing out on the old blacks. They need the damn eggs, girl. Okay? S stop talking about the abortion eggs. Yo, talk the about boy. the chicken eggs. <laughs> Yo, That's what we got to get. It. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. We've been talking about this for a long time. We did. We finna we did. go. This is a good, good God show. bless y'all. Yeah. God keep y'all. Yeah. Uh, bonus. Friday? You in town? Yeah. Friday. Friday. You good? Yeah. I might have. I'll just probably have a, a hard out. Um, how, how hard? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know we I, don't know how to work this. No, 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 no. We're just going to leave this stuff on. Be like, <laughs> we'll be <laughs> fine. We'll be streaming all weekend, no, I guess. We'll be fine. We just can't go longer. Longer. Like by 11? Yeah, 11's fine. Okay. Because oh, I got to get, get a haircut, then I got a pre-rehearsal dinner for uh, a wedding on Saturday. Oh, all these say, weddings. Wedding. All these weddings. I know. I can't You wait. know she's going to be looking and looking. She been looking. She, she already, already is. Listen, everybody I was, relax. I was talking at, when, at your wedding thing. I said, so tell me, girl, what you... A lot of weddings thoughts? in the summer, Angel. A lot of questions, huh? Thoughts are, thoughts are being deposited. Listen, I know. I can't wait. I want to jump what, up and down. What the say? It's time to go. All right, y'all. We love y'all. God bless y'all. We'll see you soon. Bye. Cut it. Here's another banger for you. Here's another one. Here's another banger for you. Here's another one. Here's another banger for you. Here's another banger for you. With my boy Kev on stage And that chick angel